Tonight, paranormal agents will be investigating the Alamo Antique Mall located in downtown San Antonio, Texas. San Antonio is an amazing place with historical landmarks, fine dining, the beautiful river walk, and let's not forget the spirits of the dead. Hauntings are as popular around San Antonio as margaritas are on the river walk. Hi, my name is Linda Wickwire. I'm the owner of the Alamo Antique Mall here in San Antonio, this beautiful city of ours. Um, I'd like to welcome you to our store and some of the hauntings and the ghost stories that we have here in our mall. We do have ghosts. Uh, they rest on the third floor and the fourth floor. Um, we're told it's a female but we don't know for sure. We don't know the stories. Uh, as a matter of fact, there was a lady came yet Saturday and she said she's been coming since 2005, but she won't go upstairs for the fact because the ghost was tormented upstairs. And she named the areas, the kitchen and the ghost room. We do have a room called the ghost room where most of our activities take place or people have been touched. Uh, things move, the floor moves. Um, again, there's people that seen after hours are closed, there are people up in the window in the fourth floor, person standing. We've also had a sighting of a female walking the floors at night, walking the aisles in a dress. So we've had many sightings, many reportings. Also people come down and lady hyperventilating and crying and screaming. Then we do have people who come twice a year, three times a year to visit the ghost, specifically the ghost. And so those are some of the stories that were told. And hope you come visit us and come visit the ghosts that we have. Our address is 125 Broadway on the corner of Broadway and Travis, downtown, two blocks from the Alamo. And our phone number is 210-224-4354. All right, this is where our deaf and mute guy comes to visit his ghosts. He says this is the corner where the ghosts are that don't have a home and that this is where they come out at at night. And apparently one of our customers was touched here in this area as well. Now, it starts in here in the shower area. I've had a lot of activity in the shower area. People said they've come and that their hair just stands up on their neck in here. This is our ghost room and it's been labeled Ghostly bargains, awesome. but um, but this is where all the activity. Because when anytime customers come in, we ask them, "Where were you?" You know, they always ask, "Is there anything weird to happen in the building, or do y'all have ghosts?" And we say yes, but we don't tell our customers. And they, and we'll ask them, "Where were you in the real, you know, in the relation to the building?" And it's always in this room. When you come up to the third floor, to the right of the stairs. So this is where everything has been done. Floors have moved. Um, lampshades of spun. These are recording. These are recordings from our customers. So, I've only had the one incident here. Uh, they have an old antique elevator, and my folks were in town, and we came to, down here to visit. And Linda wanted to take them up the old elevator with the shut door, and it was really unusual because we all came off the umbrella, uh, umbrella, the elevator. Excuse me. And as I got off, I felt like the floors were just waving like this, and I, I have no. I had no idea what it was, and uh, that and every, I was asking everybody else, "Do you feel this?" They were, no, and it, I was the only one. So we were, you know, coming off. It was just, it was an unusual feeling for me, and I couldn't explain it. There was no earthquake or anything like that because nobody else was feeling it. But yeah, it was, it was a very unusual feeling because you were walking and it just, it, everything felt very loose. So wow. yeah, it was cool. I know I'd asked you earlier, but what is it that you feel? Well, when I came over here for the first time two years ago, I thought the place was like really interesting, and I got drawn up onto the third floor, and I also felt the same thing that you felt, where the floors were really wobbly, and I felt like really off balance, and then I got drawn into the, the ghostly room in there. I felt like there was a spiritual attachment to that room as well. Hmm. Is it that you feel a presence, or do you feel, is it, you just feel the energy? Because you're saying you felt the waviness also. Is yeah, that, that could be from an EMF field, like really high EMF, which we'll do a baseline reading throughout the building too. But um, the potential here for like spiritual attachments to objects, since this is an antique store, is like pretty, you know, good chance. And then yeah. um, so close to the Alamo and the, you know, this historical area here. I'll often wonder that because all the, the antiques that are in here, 
and then but you have the one lady that's always been seen obviously she's part of the building but you know yeah. so, cool Hello? Whoever moved that door, can you do it again? Can you open the door all the way? Just push the door open. Come on, we should open some more. Is that how you get to the party? Is the party upstairs? There's all kinds of stuff happening. Well, hello. The elevator shaft. Do you want me to come upstairs? If you want me to come upstairs, you need to open the door for me. Be a gentleman. Okay, for whatever reason, uh, this other camera that I just had on me, it just shut off. We don't know why, but it looks like the battery's full. Look at that. You see that? Hmm. Battery's full, isn't it? Yep. So, I mean, there's really no reason why that should have shut off. I got a full battery, too. So, for whatever reason, uh, this camera just shut itself off, and I have no idea why. But we're on the third floor. We're in the ghostly bargains room, which is probably the most haunted room in this whole place. And those voices you're hearing are coming from outside. So, that's not an EVP, just for the record. Those are drunk people. Drunk people. Okay, so we have drunk people right outside. But this place is awesome. It's old, built in the late 1800s. Um, it, it's, it's a phenomenal location, and it's got a lot of antiques in it. So, I mean, it, it's a place that you know is going to harbor a lot of, uh, I guess, a lot of emotions from people that are connected to a lot of the items that are here. And we're going to just do an EVP session and see what we can pick up. I don't, I don't know if you're real or not, but I've heard that who's ever in this room has scared a couple of people at least. I'd like you to show yourself to me, come over here, make the, touch the antenna on my device that I have in my left hand. Come over here and prove to me that you're real. Hey Ben, why don't you try walking around a little bit over here in this room and see if there's something that'll spark up. Uh, why don't you walk around? Now just take a walk and see if that see if that thing's gonna light up. Okay, point jump to a point three, back to a point zero point zero.
Joaquin. Joaquin. He hitting stuff. Was that you, Ben? Do what? What? Was that you? Yeah, that was me. What happened? You freaking left me in there, that's what happened. You didn't like that? No. Why? Creepy in there. Now let's see how creepy it can get in here. Noise. They say the tunnel is sealed off, like with cement, so that there shouldn't be anything in there making. I just saw a shadow. That was weird. It wasn't like a black shadow, it was a white one. Are you trying to show yourself to me? What I'm going to do is I'm going to be doing an EMF sweep. A lot of these older buildings have a lot of exposed wiring and a lot of the old piping. So one of the things I noticed a little while ago was a lot of the fluorescent lights in here. There's a lot of humming. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an EMF sweep floor by floor and see what I can come up with. Now the lights, they have them on during the day and that's when a lot of the reported activity comes on. And if anybody has any type of sensitivity to EMF, we might be able to debunk that. Wow. Okay, I'm in the back towards the um, the blocked off door. The field room room's changed again. It's gotten colder in here. The hairs on my arms are sticking up now. Is there anyone back here that would like to speak to me? You have to yell, because I cannot hear you very well. If you cannot make a noise with your vocal, with your mouth, move a box, tap on a box, make a sound. Something I know it's you and not the out, not outside. Move something. Move those flowers. I want to know if someone's in here. 
well. The uh, millimeter shot up to 1.5. It's going back to 1.9. Oh, I'm sorry, 1.1, 1 .1, 0.8, 0.7. I'm walking into the boiler room, 0 0.8, 1.2, is there anyone in here? Point 0.9, point 0.7, point 0.5, point 0.3. Point two. Now I'm walking back out. 1 1.0, 1.4, 1.7, 1.9. Well, I'm looking at the uh, electrical lines above me. Looks like it's going down. To point 0.1 now. Point 0.4. Now I'm standing in the same spot right in front of the boiler room door. I got a point 0.9, point 0.8. It's just fluctuating. I'm going to stand here for a couple minutes and see what happens. It keeps on going up and down. Got a 1.3. Can you touch this machine in my holding that I'm holding in my hand? I want it to go back up. Make it go up to a 3.0. The closer you get to it, the higher the number goes. So right now I got a 0 0.5. Make it go up higher. 0 0.7. Higher. 0 0.8. Come on, get closer to it. Point seven. Is there anybody down here with me? Can you please make the noise? Real high EMF readings here. Hearing footsteps right above me. Did you hear a little knock? Yeah, I don't know where that came from. If that was you, can you do a louder knock? Everybody says that this room is extremely haunted, that has a lot of activity, that a ghost or a spirit resides here. If that's true, can you do something so that we know that you're here? Can you move something for us? Some people have sensed that you're female, is that true? We mean you no harm, we simply want to communicate with you. Can you do something for us? Like Tasha said, are you female? Were you killed in here? Do you speak English? Hablas español? ¿Qué es tu nombre? Did you just get like a funny smell? Mm -hmm. I just had like a funny smell come over me, almost like something rotting. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's why I looked at you. I didn't know if you passed gas or something. Yeah, if I would have bought a clean that one, but no, it wasn't me. <laughs> Seriously, that was just really bad. It was just a quick whiff. I don't, I don't know exactly what it was, but it was a very quick whiff of something almost like rotting smell that just came by and it was here and gone. It was weird. I don't even know what it smelled like. I don't know. It was just weird. It was pretty nasty. Was that you that tried passing by? Is that you that made that offloader? Trying to give us a sign that you're here? I don't think a female would have smelled like that. No, I don't think that was female. At least not an it attractive was, one. No, I don't, I don't <laughs> know. But it, it was pretty bad. Do you know who hurt you? Do you know their name? Is that you touching the antenna? Can you do it again? Something you know, hurt her maybe. It was kind of funny because that went off. I was moving. I don't know if that could have been me, but. Move again and see if it happens. I'll, I'll try it again. Maybe it's detecting your motion of your hands. Move your hands. Your foot, move your foot. Is it you moving? Move a lot. Oh, even the EMF's going off. Okay. I'm not moving when that went off. All right, maybe we triggered some reaction when we were talking about her getting hurt. Tell us the name of the person that hurt you and what they did to you. Can you do that again? Can you make that machine go off? Can you touch it? I was working at something here. Hmm? I was working at something here. She seems to respond more to talking to her than telling her what to do. I think most sure. women do not like to be told what to do. Boy, don't I know that for to be true. Mm -hmm. We'd love to hear what happened to you. You have a story that needs to be told. And we're here to listen. You're welcome to tell us all about what happened to you. Maybe we can help you. Was justice ever ser served in your death? Did your attacker get away with murder? How were you killed? Maybe 
suffocated or got stabbed in the chest, something with your chest was hurting? There's not supposed to be any alcohol up here. I was out on the fourth floor provoking it to open the door. I, I had the door, the door closed just like this. And I heard the, the squeak of the door. That's exactly what I just heard. Came down, both doors were as I had left them. So I don't know where the squeaking came from. So that's why we, we came down here to meet up with Eddie and Tasha. See if maybe if them walking down there didn't shift the doors or something. But uh, we're still gonna try to figure it out. Okay, right now we're in the basement and what we're gonna do is do an EVP session down here and try and see if we're able to get something. Uh, this is gonna be pretty much the last one. And uh, we hope that we have some evidence on, on tape or uh, captured on some of our recorders or, or video. Mm-hmm. Were you ever arrested? Were you good or were you bad? You hear that? Mm -hmm. Were you good or bad? Stop talking to There's something moving in here. Yeah, there was something moving in here earlier when Alex and I were in here. Okay, well, just listen for a second and see what the hell that is. If you're moving around in here, can you do it again? I'll ask again, were you a good person or a bad person? Were you a violent person while you were alive? Do you like to hit girls? Were you a wife beater? Or are you afraid to come over here now because there's a man protecting her? And not only that, I'm a policeman. I can take you to jail. It was like scrambling, like something scrambling across over here. I haven't seen any signs of rodents down here, so I don't think it was a rodent. But there was something moving over here and all this stuff. Did you just make the sound? What? I felt something pinch me. Is there a bug? I don't see anything. Pinch you were on the back? Yeah, right here. Well, see, the sound came from over here a minute ago, Can so it, it, it might have moved. No bug bite? No. No bug bite? Uh-uh. Did you just pinch her? Are you trying to hurt her? Was that you? It doesn't like you, does it? Apparently not. I'm an acquired taste. I imagine. <laughs> We're finishing up our second and last night investigating here at the Alamo Antique Mall. Our team worked really well together and we investigated each floor and had a lot of amazing experiences and collected a lot of great evidence that we hope you'll enjoy watching. Would you like to share some experiences from this investigation? Sure, and let me tell you something. We had a lot of fun over here, and we were here for two days, uh, and they were spread out a little bit you know, throughout the week because we wanted to kind of try and catch it on different days to see what would happen. 
But tonight we came in for second and final uh, investigation of the Alamo Antique Mall and uh, kind of wrap things up. And we had some really good experiences. Uh, the area was also uh, utilized in prohibition times and, you know, of course, with the outlawing of alcohol and what have you. Uh, there was tunnels that run underneath the building, which uh, in turn were cemented up, but were used by the bad guys to, to run alcohol and booze and what have you. So we did a little role plating, me being a police officer, I decided, you know what, I'm gonna act like a cop and we'll play good cop, bad cop. And Tasha and I were on the fourth floor and we did that for a little while. We don't know if we picked up anything yet, but I mean, it was worth a try. Alex and I did pretty much the same thing in the basement right near where the tunnels were cemented up. And we had some results with that as well, where we heard some tapping on the other side of the, the tunnel. We don't know if we were able to capture that on recording, but we gave it a good try. The building all in all, awesome. Uh, it, it's a lot of fun and, and we enjoyed ourselves. And like she said, every, everybody worked well. What about you, Philip? You had anything good? I enjoyed the location. Uh, there's a lot of floors, a lot of older uh, antique stuff here. Uh, myself up on the fourth floor with Renee, I heard some sniffling sounds, but other than that, it's just a lot of creaks and pops from, from this building being so old. Uh, we, we hit each floor and that was the most significant thing that happened with me uh, and, and Renee as well, I guess. But we're going to have to review and see what we come up with. What about you, Renee? Um, a lot of uh, sounds, a lot of pops, a uh, couple of cold drafts here and there. Uh, how'd that go with you? No, I didn't pick up anything after that, after we said the Lord's Prayer. Okay. So what about you, man? I mean, do you have anything that happened? Uh, I like the fifth, I mean the basement, it was real good, it had a lot of good sounds, uh, especially that knocking on the other side of the wall, that's supposed to be cemented. That was kind of creepy, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Yes, it was. And um, all in all, this building is awesome. It's got a lot of history here. We had a great uh, time here investigating, and you should check out the Alamo Antique Mall. They have a lot of great antiques here. It's downtown San Antonio. Okay, we're in Big Bay National Park, and as Philip, who's videoing me right now, just said a little bit ago, we have found BFE. It does exist. It's here, and uh, if this place exists, I'm sure there's going to be some shit out here that, you know, uh, we're going to find as well. Hopefully, uh, we'll get some good video and stuff, and uh, maybe find uh, maybe some UFO footage. Or, but we're going to be at the Honic uh, Silver Mines, which are going to be just up the road, where they used to mine for Quicksilver. So we'll check it out and see what we find. Yeah, we're looking for a spot to go do some UFO watching. But it's just so pretty out here. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and walk back down because it's a long way down there. Yeah, the mines are over here to our right. No, let's see some black marks. Scorch marks, maybe? Or is that just a part of the rock formation? There's no tub on. Is my, cam is my camera making that sound? Do, 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 do. Let's try to autofocus. Do you hear that voice? Is that you? No, it's not me. Hello? I'm getting some radiation over here. There's somebody out here with us? Make a noise for us or talk to us.
I hear voices. You hear that? It's like a woman crying. Uh, I'm gonna do some long exposures, no flash, with the camera, see what I can pick up. All right, Eddie. What's up? <laughs> so last night, uh, around two o'clock, I was sleeping in the top bunk, and I happened to look out the window, and through the trees, there, there's trees maybe about sixty yards away, and I saw this amber yellowish light. In the trees and I thought it was a camper so I looked out there this light turned on turned off turned on again for another minute or two turned off turned back on I thought it was a flashlight just kept on looking at the window for looking for campers didn't think anything about it this morning until this morning I, I got up and looked outside the window and I looked at the trees and I noticed that there's no way it could have been a camper because it would have been, it would have been about 20 feet off the ground so in about five minutes, we're gonna go out there and take a look and see if we can see anything. Okay, well I saw the light right of that no parking sign in the first gnarly looking tree, the dark brown tree right there. So when I, ha I happened to look out the window this morning just to get, you know, just try to get, figure out where it was. See, so it seemed kind of high now, it seems, Maybe like 15, 20 feet off the ground. And I think you thought it was a camper. Because from in the dark, you couldn't see a thing. It's dark out here. Really, really, really dark out here. I don't know if there's any insects that big to produce a light like that. It was, it kind of looked like a flashlight, a regular flashlight beam. Good circle. I don't think there's any insects out here right now. It's too cold. Well, we were walking down the trail and we ran into this. Uh, looks like someone is selling art from Mexico we ran into some uh, a guy from on a horseback yesterday, and he was selling walking sticks. Um, there's a sign here that says "Art for Sale." Walking stick six dollars, and then the prices for these little trinkets. These people um, that leave it behind are pretty trustworthy, but this is some really nice art they got here. This walking stick has rattlesnake on it, and these other ones have cactus and it's a like cardinal and a cactus. This is really nice artwork. Roadrunner, cactus, uh, some other insects on here. This is really nice. We had heard about some pictographs and we happened to find some and there's some right up here. I uh, don't know what it says, but uh, this is the first bit that we've come across. So we're still exploring a little bit. Is there anybody here with us right now?
What is your name? Puedes hablar con nosotros. ¿Cómo te llamas? All right, we've asked a few questions. We're going to listen back and see if we've caught anything. Okay, we haven't caught anything on here yet. Hey, we're still here in Big Bend National Park and we pulled over to enjoy the sights of the mountains and I took five steps away from the road and found not only marijuana but heroin as well. Some crazy stuff here along the border. Park. Uh, we came out here to do some sky watching and it was a really fun trip. Uh, we captured some some UFOs on on the camera and um, we also had, oh actually I had, I had experience at the Tussos Mountain Lodge. Uh, we were sitting down having lunch and happened to look out the window and I saw a, a white orb shoot from right to left through some mountains but unfortunately I was not filming at the time so we did not capture that. Uh had a great time out here with everybody. Uh, uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a good time. You know, what I thought was incredible, though, was the, the flashes that we were seeing in the sky. Mm -hmm. when, when we did see, you know, those UFO-type craft that were going over that we couldn't identify. We know they weren't planes, but yet when they flashed, it was such a bright flash. I mean, it was just incredible. Yeah. Yep. You know, I, I mean, that, that right there was probably... The kicker for me that really caught my attention was these bright flashes. I mean, you see satellites and things like that going over all night long, but these flashes of light that took place and these bright, bright, bright uh, objects that are moving, these orb-like objects, you know, that are moving across the, the film. I mean, it was just, it was incredible. And I mean, the the sky out here is so clear that it was, it really made uh, for, for an interesting uh, sky watch that night. Sure did. Yeah. Hello. Are there any spirits here that would like to communicate with me? Please wait until I get finished walking up the stairs to make yourself known. What's in there? Another stairs. Oh, I don't want to go up those stairs. I heard a voice over here. Hey, Eddie, is someone inside the building? Is somebody inside the building?
Tasha, Ben, Renee, second floor, BFW. I just saw something move over here. It's like something like blocked out the laser lights from here and then like went right through the door. Why are you still here? My left hand is like, has like needles and it likes to fall asleep. It's weird. I heard something. Yeah, what was that? It sounded like. It sounded like a whoosh. Okay. You know like how you open a drawer full of silverware? Okay. That's yeah. like what it sounded like, right? But there's no kitchen over here. Maybe we need to go upstairs. What is that? Oh, it must have fallen out of my pocket. Where? I feel, uh, yeah, I feel like, I don't know. I feel kind of like a little lightheaded. Maybe it's because I'm by the stairs and I I have a feeling like I could fall or something, I don't know. Maybe, I think we need to... Where do you want to go? Um, go upstairs. Go upstairs? Do you need a light? Go upstairs? Yeah. I feel yeah. a breeze. I feel a breeze. When you said that, I heard a footstep. I heard something. Like right there. I hear footsteps. It's getting a lot darker in here. Can you show yourself to us? Did you hear a whisper? I heard like a, a could have been like a, yeah. It sounded like a little girl to mm -hmm. me. Do you like to play up here? Do you want to play a game with us? Do you like to play peekaboo? Do you hear the sound up here? Mm -hmm. Maybe she does like peekaboo. I heard something behind me. Yeah, I heard it too. When he was getting really close, it kind of spooked me. Like, well, I heard a thump sound. Is that what you heard? Yeah, like I heard, like, like something was coming close to me. In a cold breeze right now. Do you want to come upstairs? Yeah. Can you turn the light on? Yeah. I'm weird. You don't want to hang out here or go around to the... Let's go try where she plays with the toys. Can you pour me some tea? I just want to play. I hear someone talking. Coming from where? Um, it's on my headphones, so I don't know where it's coming from. Can you speak up? I can't hear you. breathing down here. Is that you? You like this? I like this nutcracker. Here, you know what? I want to put it with your other dolls. It's all yours. You can play with it. I like the second floor. Let's go back to the second floor. I don't know. I don't know why she felt sick in the bathroom. And we kept hearing that drawer, like the silverware drawer sound. I heard that like three or four times. Let's go back downstairs.
Thank you, little girl. Thank you. Is there anyone here with us right now? Is it a past your bedtime? Are there any other spirits here? You can approach us now and try to communicate with us. Do you like having visitors? Can you go slam the door to the attic and lock us in here? Then open it back up. <laughs> needs to hear your story. We need to know that you're here so we can share your story. Are you afraid of us? Alright, my name is Philip. This is my friend Tasha. Is there anybody down here with us right now? Can you tell us your name? Did you hear anything about the basement, like any stories? All I heard was about a guy wearing a his boots were and his pants were tucked into his boots, wearing a long sleeve shirt, and he had a ponytail. That was seen. Yeah, he's he, he's seen not in the basement, but seen all over the property, constantly seen like two or three times a week. Is there someone buried on this property? Do you need medical treatment? I'm a medic in the army. I saw like weird dimming. Where? Like the whole like you know how they see like on this pipe right here? Mm-hmm. It just dimmed for like that. Hmm. Do you need help? I'm a medic. I can help you. I like a really metallic taste in my mouth right now. Like blood? Mm-hmm. Philip and Tasha, basement, second part of EVP session. Is there anyone here that would like to communicate with us? If there's anybody in here, make your, makes yourself known by sight or sound. Did you know that you're dead? Yeah, I think it's the pipes. It's not like shuffling. It sounds like water maybe. No, I can hear the water, but it sounds like shuffling, like scooting. If that's you over there, come over here. Is somebody on the first floor? Hey Eddie, is anybody on the first floor? You're not answering. Eddie, Alex, Renee, anybody on the first floor?
We're finishing up our investigation here. I'm gonna wait for the second. Do you want me to take the picture? No, it's not, not, not a picture. It's not a picture, it's video. You can go ahead and go back. What's going on? <laughs> Ready yet? Oh God! I think that was my own earpiece that just touched me and scared me a little bit. Sorry. It sent you a text message. <laughs> it's a.